Hello crafty friends, welcome to another Stumping September video. Today I'm going to use a stamp and die set, but don't worry if you haven't got a stamp and die set. I'll show you how you can create a similar look. The first thing I'm going to do is take some Distress Oxides. I've got tumbled glass here and I'm going to blend it all over this panel of smooth white card. I cut this out with a stitched rectangle die. This is going to be the front panel on my card. I'm not looking for a completely flat blend. I want it to be kind of variegated. So now I've got Broken China, which is a greeny blue or a bluey green. And I'm going to add some of this over the tumbled glass. I think I'll come in with a little bit more tumbled glass over the top of that. Now I'm going to add some splatters of water. I've given that a minute for the water to reactivate the ink and I'm going to mop that up. Now I'm going to give this a really good dry with my hair dryer because I want to heat emboss on top of this. I want to add some gold heat emboss spatters to my background. Now there are plenty of ways of doing this, but I'm going to do stamping today because it's stamping September. So I'm going to give this a good going over with corn flour, just to make sure everything's nice and dry. So I'm going to have this in a bit from the side because sometimes when you put stamps right up against the edge here it can get a bit squashed when you close the door. So I'm going to add this here like this, just overlapping the edge and then ink it up with Versamark, just a sticky embossing ink. Just do one side for the first go and see how that looks. I'll dip that in here, my gold embossing powder. And now I'm going to lay this on here. So I'm really happy with that. I think it doesn't actually look like I did that with four different impressions. It looks pretty good. Now I've got a card blank here and this is going to sit on top of my card blank but not all of it. What I want to do is die cut using this feather die which goes with this feather stamp an aperture. So I'm thinking about there. So I've got a little bit of low tack tape. I'm going to tape inside the die because for this card I don't want the interior. If it survives the washi tape then I might use it on another card but I want that exterior for this one. And I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine protecting the front of my card from the scratches in the cutting plate. So I've got my aperture, this survived, so I'm going to put that to one side. And now I'm going to slice this. I'm going to take just over three centimetres off. That is about, let's say, one and a quarter inches. So I've put my card blank in my stamping platform and I'm just going to pop this bit here that I've cut out. Get it where it's going to be on the final card and now take my feather stamp and line it up so the stamp goes in the die cut area. I'm going to put my head right over for this. So that is going to be where I want to stamp my feather. I'm going to pick that up. I can move that out of the way for now. I'm going to give this a going over with corn flour and ink this up with embossing ink. And I shall sprinkle some gold over this. 
There's a few stray bits of embossing powder which I'll just brush away. So now it's cooled and set, I'm popping it back in my stamp positioner. The card is slightly warped, but it'll flatten out later. And what I want to do is stamp on a sentiment, and I've chosen the words, hello there. I'll pop this in just so I can see how everything's going to look. And I'm going to stamp this in broken china. This might take a few goes because it's a silicone stamp as opposed to photopolymer. And they don't always stamp brilliantly first few times with distress oxides because they're water based. In fact, I don't think this one's going to cooperate at all. It's a bit blurry. But what we might do is stamp it separately and stick it on. But I'll do that in a minute. To attach this, I'm going to pop it up on some one millimetre thick craft foam tape. Just gives it that little bit of lift, but shouldn't affect it going through the post. Should still be able to go as a regular letter, rather than a large letter in the UK at least. There we go, that's all nice and straight. And now I'm gonna try and rectify this stamp situation. I did give this stamp are going over with a sand eraser yesterday when I was experimenting for this card and we'll put it over here away from the hinge and we'll cut it out with a stitched rectangle die there we go so that could just go on there like that or we could pop it up on a bit of foam tape but I'm thinking that's probably fine as it is I use a little bit of high tech glue. Right, that's this card done. I really like the look of this kind of die cut edge with the recessed stamping sort of edging into the coloured panel. You could, if you wanted to go less clean and simple, obviously extend this further or over the whole panel. You could heat emboss that in gold rather than blue, but I quite like the having the colour over that side. But what if you haven't got a die to go with the stamp that you want to use? So here's the other bit, the bit that I made. I'm just going to chop off the raggedy edge from the previous die cut. So just put your panel in your stamp position, or you could use an acrylic block for this. Put your stamp on, pick it up. You can add ink to this, you could cover the whole thing or just go along the edge that would be die cut. Doesn't matter what ink you use because you're going to get rid of this bit. Stamp that on, just make sure the edge of it is stamped nicely. And then take your detail scissors and cut around the outside, leaving a little border. And what you're after is not the feather, although you could obviously keep that and use that. You're after the other bit. And what did we do that last one at? We did one and a quarter, didn't we? So we'll do that again, one and a quarter. And then take an embossing tool and run it down the cut edge. And that will bevel the edge and make it, excuse the banging, the neighbors are doing some more DIY, but we're nearly finished. That will bevel the edge along where you cut it. And then that, can sit on top like that. So you can do this without a die. Another way to achieve this look with dies and stamps is to take a die, this is a circle die, and a stamp, this is a flower stamp but it's fairly circular, and do that process. So I've got a background from my box of backgrounds and bits. I'm going to take this circle die and die cut out of it. So there we've got our circle and our flower fits nicely in there. And for slicing, instead of going vertically, I think I'm going to go at a jaunty angle. So we can put that on here where we're going to stick it eventually and add our flower where we want it. And stamp that, stamp that in any colour. I think if we're just doing a demonstration, 
I shall stamp it in black. So that's not necessarily a colour scheme that I would put together. I would probably do something like this with gold or copper embossing for the flower. But you see what I mean. You could use a basic shape die to cut a hole for a stamp that you've got that fits in it. Right, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with dies and stamps or just stamps that you've got in your stash. If it has, please do let me know in the comments, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon for another Stamping September video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.